Hello guys and welcome to another squad wipe highlights video which is the second part to this video The first part was the montage which I already posted and you can go ahead and check it out I'll leave a link in the description Regarding this series this might be the last video on it for now at least because I feel like I shared all my strategies But anyway if I come across new tips then I'll make sure to share it with you guys And for now I hope you enjoyed the tips in today's video Let's get started Let's start with the first fight in this game and honestly it was a rough game since the start but the main struggle was with this squad right here. They were killing everyone across the map and we met near black market as they were busy fighting another squad. So I decided to third party them but unfortunately for me the area we were in was way too open. So I didn't really have an opening to engage. All until this bot decided to expose my location so they decided to rush me but I decided to hold my ground and fight. Because I had this rock right here which provided me with a tiny high ground advantage that that can win me the fight. So it was all going great, I knocked one and heavily damaged the other one and I would have continued the fight if it wasn't for their teammate who came from the revive flight. I was not expecting that so I decided to abort the fight and leave to fight another day. But these guys wanted my ass real bad and they kept chasing me across the map. Obviously here I should have switched to the Fennec but he jumped as soon as I reached the roof and I got distracted by his voice. Anyway it worked out and I survived with 1 HP so I had to bail again. Now the good news is that they had 30 seconds only to get their teammates dog tag because remember this was the last revive flight. So I was checking the timer to see if they managed to revive him or not but as you can see the number of players didn't change which means they failed to revive him. And that was a big relief for me especially because that player was probably their best player. We met again in the final circle. You can see them here using an airborne so I spent a bit of time observing the area to see if there are any other squads still alive and here I saw another enemy. Always try to get as much info as you can because it might help you make a plan. Here I really wanted that airdrop because I needed an adrenaline but these guys were in the air and they can rush me as soon as I land. And they were smart too because they landed on the highest point in the circle. This way they have vision on me all the time and they can rush me at any time. And what's worse is that I kept taking damage from the zone like an idiot and as the circle started to shrink I was running out of options and I had one option remaining to win which is using the last enemy as a distraction. انا انا فنشني So everything went perfectly as planned. I landed on the last enemy not to kill him but to bait the squad to engage with him and get them distracted while I sneak out with the snowboard, get some adrenaline from the airdrop and in the process I managed to split the enemy team apart and kill them one by one. You know the funny thing is that these guys saw the other enemy players but they ignored them the entire time. They just wanted to kill me and I ended up using that to my advantage.
Moving on to the second fight, and again, I'm being chased by another thirsty squad, but to be fair, this time, I'm the one who started it. These guys were the winning team on the platform, so I had to be a little bit careful. I knocked one of the players, and the entire team shows up. Here you can notice a delay in using the snowboard because of this annoying glitch where you have to press the button 100 times. You can see here I had to press it 3 times to activate. So anyway, that's how I ended up being chased and since the area was again too exposed, I had to take the fight to another spot and these two buildings right here were perfect. You already know the drill, get high ground and start hunting. And yeah, don't forget about enemy ninja users because they're the only ones that can kill you. Which is something I totally forgot about here, but luckily I reacted fast to him after hearing his hook. Then I switched my position to confuse the enemies and get an angle on them, and in the process I managed to avoid the airstrike. Next, I have a small tip, yet an extremely useful tip to all fellow ninja users, which is a huge issue that you come across, and I noticed even good players and streamers are struggling with it. And that's when you're being chased by vehicles or snowboards. Because with other classes like Smoke Bomber, you can simply stop and throw the smoke, then run away or even fight if you want. But with the ninja, you can't really do anything, so I have two examples. First one, I'm being chased by a snowboard enemy. The I button plays big part in this, so make sure to use it to check the number of enemies. If it's one, then maybe you can stop and engage especially if you have a shotgun but in my case i didn't have it and on top of that while i was observing the enemy i noticed that he's the one with the shotgun which explains why he's being too aggressive not to mention that i don't have an idea of what class he has so i decided to play it safe and use the monkey strategy i call it monkey strategy because all you need to do is find a building and stop next to it then use the hook to get on top and surprise your enemy this way they can't touch you Notice that he had his shotgun equipped and ready, so if I stopped in the open, I would have been dead. And because he had his shotgun equipped, it was useless at this range. And you can see that he wasn't expecting this ambush, and he panicked and gave me an easy kill. One thing to keep in mind when using this strategy, use the I button to make sure you have enough distance between you and the enemy to give you time to stop and hook to the building. Because if they're too close, then they will kill you as soon as you stop. Just keep snowboarding until you get enough distance. Second example, I'm being chased by a vehicle and this time there were two enemies and since I already explained the strategy, I'll just let you guys watch it. Moving on to the final fight, and yes, you guessed it, I'm being chased again. It's mostly the case this season. So this squad landed with me in Black Market, and honestly, I gave them a good fight considering that I didn't have a vest. Watch out, B-19 is coming. 
And again, I survived with 3 HP and I had to bail and just fight in better circumstances with the vest at least. We met again near the upgrade terminal and even though I was ready to fight, it was still hard. Mainly because these guys had excellent teamwork and they cover each other's well. Plus the fact that there was another strong squad in the same area that I needed to take into account. So it was an endless chase cycle and I had to come up with a plan. And it's the same plan as the first fight which is leading them to the other enemy squad and let them smash each other. But to be honest, I didn't know they were that close. I thought they were in the mountains. Luckily, they were busy looting and I managed to sneak away. Now, I just wait for one of the squads to be eliminated, then engage with the winning squad. But that alone wasn't enough to win me the fight because these guys just eliminated the Stuary squad. And since there weren't any buildings around, I had to use something else. And that's something that I mentioned in previous videos, which is the zipline. And I find it crazy how players keep falling for this trick, even the best players. But as I mentioned, they are blinded by their overconfident and thirst for more kills. So anyway, I fired at them not to hit them, but just to get their attention and bait them to use the zipline. See how easy it can be to eliminate strong squads and trust me these guys are really good. I know Payne and I met him few times he's a good player. So not only I managed to get rid of the squad that was chasing me in the start but I also eliminated another sweaty squad and I ended up winning that game because of it. I mean it depends on your goal. If you're trying to have fun and get more kills then you can take your chances and fight the first squad and then the second squad. But against such players and using ninja class your chances of surviving are extremely low. And if you're in it for the win like in my case then you need to plan your attacks carefully and use your surroundings to your advantage whether it's buildings or rocks or bots or even your own enemies like you saw in today's video also one thing you'll notice while playing solo vs squads wiping squads gets easier as you knock more enemies not only because they're losing their teammates but also they start losing their confidence especially if you manage to knock the strongest member of the squad i really hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay and i hope my tips becomes useful thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video peace Nice, bro. Nice, bro. GG in your ass.